afternoon. Family and friends, we gather for our service and tribute to Arnold Herzog. Of course, you knew him, among other things, as Sonny. Shiviti Adonai Lednegdi Tamid Kimini Bal Emot Lachen Sameach Libi Viagel Kivodi Af Bisari Ishkon Lavetach. I have set the Eternal always before me. God is at my side. I shall not be moved. And therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure. For you will not abandon me to death, O God, nor will you let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy. Enduring happiness is your gift. It is paradoxical that Jewish tradition has us begin a funeral service with these verses from the 16th Psalm that speak of exaltation of the heart and speak of eternal joy when in fact the mood is exactly the opposite today. Today is a day of grief and sadness. But we begin with these verses to remind us that even in grief there is gratitude. And while we grieve Sonny's death and we will miss him dearly, and while these are days of sadness and tears, we also reach deep down into ourselves to find the faith, the strength, the hope to offer our thanks for the gift of his life, for a life that was well lived and richly lived, for a life that was fully lived. And so today these emotions intermingle grief and gratitude, sorrow and sadness, along with thankfulness. Elsewhere in the Psalms we read that the days of our years are three score and ten, or perhaps by reason of strength four score years, and yet a thousand years in God's sight are but as yesterday when it is past. And here's the essential message of the psalm. Teach us, therefore, to number our days that we may attain a heart of wisdom. May your favor, O God, be upon us. Establish the work of our hands that it may long endure. Teach us to number our days that we may attain a heart of wisdom. Mitch, not exactly in those words did you say that about your father, but really that is what you told me when we spoke. That he had a, that he had a big heart. That there was a kindness and a gentleness about him in the way he approached people and the way he did things. He understood loyalty and devotion to family, first and foremost, but also to friends. And he had friends that were lifelong friends from very young age through the remainder of his long life. He and your mother were devoted to one another, married for 51 years until her death. Eight years ago, you, of course, are the sole surviving son, and all of us here reach out to comfort you and your family, to console you today. We gather with you to comfort you and also to call upon God on your behalf and to ask that God comfort you as well, that you feel God's loving presence along with the presence of friends and family and that together we might be of comfort to you and consolation. When we confront death, we ask the eternal questions about life and its meaning. The biblical author put it this way. 
What are we, O oh God, that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? For we are little more than a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. It seems that we come and go like grass. In the morning it shoots up renewed, and yet in the evening it fades and withers. You cause us to return to dust. You tell us, return, O oh, you mortal creatures. If only we were wise and understood where we are going. But this we do know. Mark the wholehearted. Behold the upright. They shall know true peace. I'd like to call upon Mitch to share some reflections. So, um, my dad was, uh, he was a good father to me and my brother Kevin. He was always there for us when we needed him. Um, he was a good husband to my mom for over 50 years. He was uh, a good friend. He was um, a kinsman cowboy, grew up on Kinsman Avenue, and had a group of friends that he and my mom uh, kept uh, those friendships alive for his entire life and he was a loyal and devoted friend. He was uh, a good friend in the last six and a half years of his life to Jeanette and um, you know he appreciated her um, love and companionship during this, the last years and uh, it meant a lot to him and to us to have you um, there with him. Um, he was uh, kind, gentle, he was quiet, quietly funny, he, he actually did like to tell jokes, Not, he didn't know that many of them, but he, <laughs> um, he, he, every once in a while he would. Um, and he, he never got angry, he, um, he was so patient. Um, he only got mad one time and yelled at me one time in my life. And I was 12 years old and I had a paper route um, uh, delivering newspapers in the morning, the Cleveland Plain Dealer, to our neighbors. And one morning I overslept and uh, so the neighbors started calling very early before my dad wanted to get up. and he went ballistic and it's the only time I heard him raise his voice and he said something like get your ass out there and deliver those newspapers <laughs> people are waiting for their newspapers <laughs> it was about as mad as he got he was yeah he was always patient and um, he was always ready to listen um, and you know I could I could always count on him I could call him from Italy when I was traveling overseas for a year and ran out of money and asked him to uh, get an advance on my credit card and start racking up more debt and he was more than happy to bail me out. So uh, I'm going to miss his, his good counsel and his patience and um, is the way he showed his love. And so, thank you. Mitch, thank you. Mitch shared with me that one of the constants in his father's life was his tennis playing, his love of tennis. He played just about every day. And you mentioned that at one point he had to have rotator cuff surgery on the right arm 
so he learned to play left-handed. No small accomplishment. Jeanette, you were his friend and girlfriend and companion for the past several years. The two of you had a wonderful relationship. And we offer our condolences to you. Our hearts go out to you. Sonny played the violin as a child and then again in adult life. Played with a community orchestra along the way and then a number of years ago moved to Florida. First he resisted it and then he came to love it. I hope that for those of you, his family and his dearest friends, that the disease that he struggled with and the treatments, that the memories of those difficult times will recede into the background of your memory and you will instead remember him in the fullness of life when he was hale and hearty. Our tradition teaches that when we die, we take nothing with us from this world. Our material goods, whatever we've acquired, whether it's a lot or a little, that we leave it all behind. It means nothing in the face of death. What survives us, the rabbis teach. What survives us is the Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name that we earn for ourselves in the way we live and in the way we love the relationships that we enjoyed in life. Arnold earned for himself his Keter Shem Tov, his crown of a good name, many times over. And that's what he leaves to all of us. The crown of his good name that we carry into the future with every gentle and loving word that we speak to another person. The crown of his good name that allows us to honor his life and pay tribute to his memory with every gracious act we perform for a person in need. Let that be our inheritance. Let the crown of his good name be what fills our memories. Adonai ro ilo echsar bino desha yarbitseni almei minuchod yinahaleni nafshi yeshovev. Yancheni ve ma'agale tzedek le ma'an shemo gam ki elech begeit sal mavet lo irara ki ata imadi shiftecha umishantecha hema yanachamuni. Ta aroch le fanai shulcha neget zogerai. Di shanta vashemen roshi kosi revaya. Ach tov vachesed yur defuni kol yemei chayai. The words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please rise. El male Shochen bam romim Ham se menucha nechona Tachat kanfe hashchina Im kedoshim U tehorim Kezoha harakia Mazhirim Ed nishmato Shahalach le olamo, began Eden to Hemenu Chato, Ana Balharachamim, Hasti Rehu Beseter Knafecha le olamim, Vaitzror Bitrahachaim, 
et nishmato Adonai hu nachalato v'yanuach b'shalom al mishkavo v'nomar Amen Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Arnold Alvin Herzog, for he has now entered eternity. O God of mercy, we pray, may he find refuge in your eternal presence, and may his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance, and let us all say, Amen. Please be seated. Our service will continue at Mount Olive Cemetery. For those who may wish to honor Sonny's memory with a charitable contribution, Mitch suggests that you direct your generosity to the Jewish Community Federation of Cleveland. Zichrono Livracha, may his memory be forever a blessing to all who knew him, to all who loved him. Amen. following our burial service family will return to Corky and Lenny's for the mourners meal and the meal of consolation at the back room, There's a, at the back room yes so if anybody 